Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to the King. Everybody okay? All right. You're in the land of the living, so you should be okay. <clears throat> Most high of y'all, we bless your magnificent name as we come to your this set apart appointed time you have called us to in the magnificent name of Yeshua. As usual, we need our understanding open. May you speak to our hearts and our minds, help us to be aware of the times and the seasons. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we welcome you to walk into this place to minister to your people. Uh, help us, Father, we really need it in every aspect of our lives to make sure we're not deceived. You said that we wouldn't be deceived, so we're banking on that, Father. We thank you for the law and the prophets, the apostles, and more than anything, our Messiah. Yahshua, Jesus Christ, speak to us your words of truth. My prayer is, is that these sin will sink deep down in our hearts. They would resonate in our lives and we'll bring glory to your name. Yahshua's magnificent name, hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. <clears throat> glory to the king. God's good. God is good. That's a picture. Old Mac Daddy. <laughs> the only reason why I'm doing this is because I keep throwing these throwbacks in there, man. I figured y'all liked them old things. See, that's what I used to look like when I was 17. Mother Carol looked like she's 30. She's 17. And wasn't you 17? You don't know? It's been that long ago, huh? We, we look grown. We look grown? Oh, Jesus. All right, hallelujah. Glory to the king. See, I ain't always been ugly. <laughs> hallelujah, glory to the king. All right, the message of the day, time and hour is what? Come out of her, my people. If y'all notice that it seems like every place that we go in the scriptures now, something is resonating for us to come out, separate, you know what I mean? Leave the heathens alone. Don't even have them among you. Could you imagine we had heathens always around us running? What, what kind of bad habits and traits would our children learn? Mm. All right. So today we're going to go in a little bit about the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, because it's coming up. Okay. And of course, it is that time of the year we should be ministering things like this. So we know that we have seven feasts of the Most High Yah. It says, say, seven appointed times, but we only really have like three feasts, if you understand what I mean. And I'm sure everybody's familiar with them, but out of these seven appointed times, there are only three feast days. You can search your Bible from cover to cover, and you will not find any instructions for Easter, Christmas, or Sunday. Now, I, I'm, I harp on this all the time. Because we live in a pagan, satanic nation. America is, is, is satanic to the core. It, the whole thing is, is built on fairy tales and lies. There's nothing about Christianity that's the truth. So have y'all been working to get that residue off of y'all? Get that spirit off y'all too? There's nothing. Yet and still, people are, are just not sincere about their salvation enough to come out of it. 
See, when you've been reared steeped in lies and fairy tales all your life, it's, it's hard for people to come out because most times people think about their natural family and what, they're going, what their perception is going to be, if you understand what I mean. But they're all pagan, every single one of them. The cult of pagan heathen holidays now. That's a replica of the tabernacle in the wilderness. And inside that tabernacle right there is a whole bunch of history. Also on the outside of it, a whole bunch of history for us as a people. We're going to go over that sometime uh, here before the actual feast days um, come, come up on us. Now, the spring appointed times, unleavened bread, Passover, feast of first fruits, and Pentecost, right? Yahshua fulfilled all the spring feast. That's what most people don't understand and comprehend about Yah's calendar. Yah has a calendar. The world has a calendar. But Yah has a calendar. And Yah does not care about America and its calendar. I don't know what it is about this world today that if you look at it, each nation actually think they have a special God that's unique and, and it actually rules and dominates all over this earth. And America is no different. America assumes that they are worshiping the God of the Hebrews. But they're not. They're still worshiping and serving the God of Rome. They're just using names to cover up and fabricate their false worship. That's why, again, I keep on harping because somebody's going to listen one day. Because remember, to worship the Father, you have to worship him. You no, know, he's looking for true worshipers, right? What kind of worshipers is he looking for? True worshipers. And the true worshipers they worship him how? In spirit and in truth. So if there's nothing associated with Christmas that's in the book, then it can't be the truth. Then I mean it's a lie and you can't be a true worshiper. I don't care how much you try to put Yahshua in it. Make him the reason for the season. You can do whatever you want. But it's just like they was doing over in Kings. They was worshiping plethora of Elohim, plethora of gods, but they was doing it their own way. So when you read the Torah, the Torah is basically a book of worship as well because what it does is shows us the rules, the guidelines, and the instructions. You know, the requirements, the way that he expects us to approach him. And I think he knows how he wants to be approached. What do you think? You understand what I mean? So he doesn't like all this, this co-worship and this co-mingling with other cultures and stuff to mess you up because then you'll start making light of his commandments and you'll start, your flesh will start to go over to the other side and you'll have something in your mind making you think and that you're serving Yah and you're really truly serving other gods. See, it, in antiquity, it wasn't called Christmas. It wasn't called Easter. Are you following me? It wasn't called all that. The names were different, but the worship is still the same. And that's why these American Christians are so damn deceived. And that's why they can't, come to the truth about anything when it comes to the word of the Most High Yah. You will think that the Sabbath day is one of the most easiest commandments that you can get. I mean, after all, what day is it on? The seventh day. And what day do they do? First day. See what I mean? So anything, whatever Yah says, you better believe that that satanic pagan religion is diametrically opposed to what Yah says. The appalling part is, is that when the Europeans got a hold of the Bible, they started adding in all their gods. And they started adding in translator bias from different cultures and perspectives and ways of the Hebrews that they didn't like. So they would put words in there to transform the scriptures to fit their religion. Are you following me? And they did a, a dastardly deed. Now, Luke 21, 20 says, and when you shall see, notice, and we're able to see it today. We, you would never thought we'd been able to see it. We're able to see it today. You can actually go on the internet right now. They got cameras on Jerusalem. You ever did that before? If I want to go to Key West, all I got to do is type in Key West and camera, and I get a nice little view of Key West, Florida. Y'all try this sometime, man. That internet take you all over the world. You can see people walking around. Doing everything. Hmm? Big brother got eyes in the sky, man. Woo, he everywhere. Hmm? 
But when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Now, the, you know, the world has no clue of Bible prophecy because it's been told to them by Christians in fairy tales. They don't ever think this stuff is going to come to pass. It's just a selling point. But we're going to know because we have the spirit of truth. Now, I personally um, would love for the day of the Most High, y'all, to come. Are you following me? Because it, it's going to be a very fearful and, and terrible thing when he comes. It ain't going to be this big party like everybody talking about. And it damn sure ain't going to be no rapture before the great tribulation. I mean, I was fighting that thing 30 years ago. I said, how y'all read this stuff? And it used to just irk me because you, you'll hear TV and all these people talking about the rapture, the rapture, the rapture. I said, you're a liar just like you are and everything else. But what did I look like telling people how much of a liar you look like when I'm reading this Bible for what it says and then all the people are deceived because they, they take favoritism of what these propped up preachers is and everybody loved to believe a lie. That's why it's called a strong delusion. A strong delusion. Now, anytime you stand for truth, don't you ever expect for everybody to be on your side. As a matter of fact, you're going to be hated for, for telling the truth. And you need to understand that. So don't you marvel when people start looking at you crossways and sideways when you're standing for the truth. That's your, that is your badge of honor right there to let you know that you're on the right path. And of course, the first thing that comes is the sword of the family, isn't it? Sword of the family. Hmm? I just got finished talking with Pastor Muir. He had an old childhood friend that came and visited them. Normally when you go places, don't natural family usually say, uh, <clears throat> when you get back, how was your trip? How was your journey? How was you doing? Well, he went to see Straightway Goshen, spent some time with the Israelites up there. Nobody asked nothing. Nobody said a thing. The only one that wanted to know how his trip went was his three-year-old son. Glad to have you back, Dad. How'd it go, Dad? Nobody else said nothing. And you know what really got him more than anything? It was a few Shabbats ago when I had uh, Carol, Nellie, and Summer to come up on the broadcast. And all of a sudden, that wife started manifesting. That's what you want? That, she said, why are you coming at me for another man's house? Huh? To let you know how much control these women think that they have. He flat out let her know, don't you ever come to me like that again. Don't you ever do, amen, y'all need to, I'm trying to tell y'all. If y'all continue to permit dishonor and disrespect, this questioning and this bucking up and this all that other stuff, you're going to go to hell right with her. How can you, if you can't lead her now, what if, what, what's going to happen when we do get in tribulation? If you can't lead your family now, what do you think is going to happen to you? I may not be around during tribulation. You understand what I mean? But if you're around, what are you going to do if you're always waiting on the intuition of your wife and what she got to say? That's a bad place to be. By divine fiat, the Most High Yah made you the head. Now, if I'm thinking something in my head right here, or if I'm doing something, do you think that the hand asked the head if it's okay if he could pick it up? You know, my whole body obeys me. Even when I'm not saying nothing, it obeys me. Is that making sense? It never questions what's going on up here. It's designed to move in obedience. That's the way that the family is supposed to. And of course, women don't know that that's your greatest peace, your greatest safety, and your greatest security in the world is when you are in your right place. That's when you are the most secure. But whenever you try to get out of your role and try to take on the traits of masculinity of a man, that's what chaos ensues. And, and the house will not be at peace. Only time the house is at peace is when the man is the head. 
Of course, one of the biggest things is, is that men, most of them will never communicate it, but they are afraid of suffering loss. I love my family, but I could, I could get rid of every single one of them in a, in a breath. In a literal breath, I could chalk them all over to the side. Will it hurt? Sure, I'd feel. But I love y'all more than I love anybody in this world. Nobody is going to prostitute me away from my creator and my savior. Are you following me? There are no ultimatums. There's no discussions. There's no sit down and talk about it. And I expect everybody to have the same attitude. If your husband's trying to lead you to hell, run. Run. Run to the elders. Hey, this pagan over here is trying to, he's trying to lead us to hell. You got one chance at this life. And there's many people that are already in the grave, dead and gone, and will never have another chance or an opportunity at life. That's why I say every day that you're alive, what a wonderful day that it is. To know that you can acknowledge the king when you first rise up in the morning and give him thanks for who he is and for he knew who you were before you were formed you didn't know but then when you come to the knowledge of him how grateful should you be every single day don't you ever live life and let a day go by without acknowledging his kingship, without acknowledging his reign, without acknowledging his sacrifice. That should be the first thing on your mind when you wake up every single morning. Thank you, Jesus, to be coming out of your mouth. Always reverence him. Hallelujah. All right, so when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. In other words, don't you even go in there, right? For these be the days of what? What did Yahshua promise? Vengeance is mine, I will repay so when that last trumpet blow, that's the day of vengeance. When that last trumpet blow, that's the day of vengeance. Can you imagine? Now, did it not happen before? Before y'all came down on Mount Sinai, did the trumpets wax loud and, and louder and louder? Oh, we're going to hear a trumpet. Them people ain't going to know what hit them. They're going to hear a trumpet. Huh? And it ain't going to be no aliens in spaceships either. It's going to be the day that he's going to kill a lot of people. It's going to be a wonderful day for us too. Because we're going to be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. And the people that are dead in the Messiah, they'll be raped and we're all going to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with Yah. And when we meet him in the air, guess what we're coming back to? This earth. To set up dominion. And reign of a king for a thousand years. And everybody that's left alive on this earth will be our servants. Our vine dressers and plowsmen. It's our turn to rule now. And the best thing about it is that Satan going to be bound. Won't be no rebellion. Ooh, ain't that nice? Everybody's saying, how in the world can 7 billion people all go up to Jerusalem? Let's see, that's what you think. Don't it seem like a lot of people? But ain't going to be 7 million people left alive. 
That's what y'all got to get. He is going to destroy and kill a lot of people. Y'all getting this? Don't think in these modern day numbers right now, man. Uh -uh. Y'all, have y'all ever been to a place and like you go to the airport, you go, man, there's sure a lot of people in this world. Man, there's a lot of people in this world. Man, there's sure a lot of people in this world. So when you walk through the airport, have you ever thought for a moment, okay, who's actually righteous walking through this airport? Okay, if they look righteous, let's do the acid test. Do they keep his commandments? You see how few it is now? Do you see how few it is now? I said, it ain't going to be many, Israel. So these are days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them with, with child and them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. This is prophecy. This is Yahshua speaking prophecy. Have we not been led away captive in all nations? See, the modern day Jews can't say that because they ain't never been in the bondage under no man. They just been kicked out of every place. They've been in exile in every place, but they ain't, they ain't never been in no captivity. That's what the book says in John 8. They tell you, we've never been in bondage to any man, so therefore you know they can't be the people. Another masquerading lie. You see what I mean? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the what? So who's in, Gen who's in Jerusalem now? Gentiles. Gentiles is ruling Jerusalem. It's full of Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, here's the uncomfortable part about the European Gentiles they don't want to hear today. All of these uh, people running around masquerading as Israel and Christians playing church. This is the day your world as you know it is going to be destroyed and you will inherit and we, talking about us, we'll inherit our land back. Now what amazes me is all of these talking heads today and none of them mention the type of destruction that will be taking place on this day. Jesus said, blessed are they to keep his commandments. You have the right to the tree of life. And you're going to be able to enter into the gates of the city. But everybody else, for without, are dogs. You think he's talking about four-legged dogs or two-legged dogs? How many times did Jesus make reference to a woman as a dog? So don't think dogs, whoop, 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 whoop. He talked about humans as dogs. For without are dogs, sorcerers mongers, and whosoever loveth and liveth a lie. It's not Christianity a lie. It's not Islam a lie. It's not Buddhism a lie. All of it is lies. So understand that times is vital to us as Israelites. So the fall appointed times of trumpets, Yom Tor, Atonement, Yom Kippur, and Tabernacles Sukkot. This is the time we're getting ready to head in into Yah's schedule. Y'all's time frame, y'all's calendar. And you remember, this is the, the part where when Jesus was in the temple and he was reading and then he shut the book. And then he said, this day is your, this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He didn't quote the rest of it because there's the day of vengeance that's coming. So he had already came and fulfilled the fall feast, I mean the spring feast. Are you following me? But this was yet to come. So keeping the feast days during the seventh month, we are rehearsing for our Messiah's return. Everything that we do is dress rehearsals. Everything you want it, so that we don't never forget. And we always be on time at his appointed time. Are you following me? We're not going to be fashionably Negro late. Our salvation and atonement comes through the shed blood of the Messiah. We are obedient Israelites to the covenant the Most High gave our fathers. Stop letting the outside, those that are outside the covenant, question you and your commitment to Yah. I told y'all, if anybody question you on anything and what you're doing, give them a question right back. 
So why is it you keep Sunday? Well, do you know why? Well, watch in the Bible. Can you please show me that? Can you please? Well, I don't, we don't, I don't want to talk about this. I said, I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. If I was going to hell, I wouldn't want to talk about it either. Luke 4, 18, and the spirit of y'all was upon me because he had anointed me to preach the message to the poor and he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of Messiah. And he closed the book. What I was just talking about? He closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down and all the eyes of them in the synagogue were fastened on him. When you love to been back there like this, He's sitting about looking. So, you know, them Pharisees was ready to rent their garments at any time. They were ready. How many times? Tell us, are you the Messiah? Are you the Messiah? Everybody's so tripped up on this. What they, you know, they done messed up everything. Yah's one, right? It's just that they can't comprehend the invisible Yah. But the, the Bible clearly says that Jesus... Yahshua is the word of Yah. You get that? You understand that? Look at me. I'm a man, right? You're a man creating the image of Yah, but you're not Yah. Yah is a spirit. Yah is a what? Are you following me? So when you saw Yahshua, you're seeing the very word of Yah. Kind of hard to comprehend, isn't it? That's the very word that come out of him. The word of Yah. He was the express image of Yah. Does it make sense? Yah inside, tabernacle in flesh. Hard to believe, isn't it? See, you can't be at every place at all times, but he can. It's kind of hard for you to comprehend him. Yah encompasses the whole universe. And he's there. Yah's even in this place. And guess what? And, and he's still in Mexico too. Right now. Right now, not only is he encompassed all of the kingdom of heaven, but he's also in hell. Where can you go? To run or hide from this mighty, all-powerful, Wonderful Elohim. You can't. You can't go nowhere. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. And remember, he's not the Elohim of the dead. He's the Elohim of the living. See, everybody, you think you're going to be, you think you're going to die one day, but you ain't, if you're in him, you're never going to die. All you want to do is transition from one place to another, and you're going to assume your rightful place in the kingdom. That's all you're going to do. I know it's kind of hard to believe, but you're going to leave this life and get promoted to eternal life. And it's going to be worth it all when we see Yahshua. It's going to be worth every bit of it. It's going to be worth it all when we see him. This earth is going to be a distant memory. And I mean distant, I mean distant memory. <laughs> Do you think that when we're in the kingdom, you're going to think about the life that you live? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Hallelujah. I remember that time when, when Mother Stalin's passed away. And they came and got me. They came and got me. And I laid hands on her. I said, all right, most of come back. Right now, in Jesus' name, 
Breath comes back in her body. First thing she said, you better not ever do that again. Can you imagine? You bringing somebody back to life and they tell you, you better not ever do that again? Who remembers that? All the old timers in here, they remember it. She actually let me have it, man. You better not ever do that again, man of y'all. I said, mother, the next time you go, I won't do it again. But I didn't do it. All I did was command, don't say that either. I'm getting up out of here. No, they wasn't dead and buried in the grave, but I've actually had the experience and uh, the experience of bringing two people back. And they were out for quite a while before I got there. So glory to the king. Because it ain't me, it's the spirit of Yah that is within me. Not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. Hallelujah. So you don't think I have the Holy Spirit? I got the Holy Spirit. I know I got the Holy Spirit. Couldn't do it without it. So all the eyes was fastened upon him and he began to say unto them, this day this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And then he quoted this. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of Yahweh. That's what he missed. That's what he didn't say. See, them Pharisees, they knew exactly what, what he was saying because they knew the book. Most of the people were sitting around like Catholics. We waiting on the Pope or the priest or the bishop or the whoever, the cardinal. Where you get this stuff at? That's why sometimes I, I kind of leery about the word bishop. I understand the word bishop, but where does it ever tell you in, in, in our culture that you ought to ordain people bishop? Oh, I done started something again, ain't I? Ooh, okay. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, elders, deacons, bishops, <laughs> cardinals, vestals. Where did that, where did them three come from? Huh? Ain't you supposed, you supposed not to add to nothing or take away from it? How you look running around, I'm bishop. Does that make any sense? See, it messes with your mind because it's written in the book, but God promised you and he well, it actually made a command and told you, listen, don't nobody add or take away from the prophecy of this book. I don't take it personally because I know it's written in the letter, but it's not written in Scripture. Oh, I must say something wrong. I said it, it's written in a letter, but it's not written in Scripture. Letters don't make Scripture. Ooh, we. This is tough, boy. Well, Christianity got y'all on it. Hmm? Maybe we ought to make J.C. a bishop. J.C. going to be a bishop. J.C. looked like a good bishop. Don't he look like a good bishop, man? Stand up, J.C. Bishop J.C. He's like, I don't want that. He <laughs> bless you, J.C. <laughs> I'm the comfort all of the morning to appoint unto them uh, that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for morning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called the righteous trees, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste place. There's going to be waste because by the time he come here, there's going to be a lot of stuff laid to waste. So what are we going to be doing in the kingdom? There we, see, y'all don't like that, do you? See, we get choked up. If you ain't a builder now, man, you may not make it to the kingdom. You're going to be, we're still going to be building. We're still going to be farming. What y'all think we was going to be living on clouds, looking like little babies running around mooning everybody? Man, we got work to do. We ain't going to be 
sitting around a banquet table 365 days out of the year drinking wine and singing kumbaya. Oh, never mind. And they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. And strangers are going to do what? They're going to do what? Stand and do what? So if you ain't never had no goats or sheep or cattle in the kingdom, you're going to have some goats, sheep, and cattle. And some people say, I'll just wait to the kingdom. Never mind. And the son of the alien shall be your what? Plowman and your vine dresser. So we're going to have a bunch of wine in the kingdom too. They're going to be that good stuff. They're going to be that new wine. Remember, you know, that alcoholic Jesus, he said, I'm not going to drink no more. Now, if he said he's not going to drink no more, that means he was drinking a lot of it. I'm not going to drink no more of the fruit of this vine until I drink it new with you in the... So, y'all sure going to be the first one to raise the cup. I bet y'all ain't never heard that before, have you? Isn't that amazing? Hmm? That's going to be that good wine. Because it's going to come from pure grapes. They won't be GMO modified. They will not have no pesticides, no herbicides, no chemicals. They won't have no Roundup sprayed on it. Not a weed won't even grow. But you're still going to plow. They come up with all these new ways. Well, we, we got a, a brand new way of gardening. You don't ever have to plow. I said, that's against scripture. Why would you want to come up another way? Man is always looking for new ways to not do nothing. Have you ain't never discerned your propensity to figure out how not to do nothing? Or to get around to make stuff less laborious on you? The book tells you, don't hate laborers' work. Oh, oh what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to, never mind, never mind, never mind. But ye shall be named the priest of Yahweh, and men shall call you the ministers of our Yah, and ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. See, that's the stuff y'all should have been shouting on. I got I to gotta get me one of these neon signs right here that says shout. Then when I come over and push the button, it lights up, then... Because y'all be missing the right time to be shouting. He just told you everything's going to happen for you. So Yom Tur trumpet blast. Today is the fifth of the five steps that we are to be taking from this world of politics and misguided institutions. The Most High wants us to listen to his instructions and do them. So for some reason... Him as our father, he loves it when we are obedient to him. Do y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Now, these are the dress rehearsals for that great day. Now, Deuteronomy 27 verse 9 says, And Moshe, Moshe, and the priest, the Levites, spake unto all of Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. Take heed and do what? Listen. Hearken, O Israel. Ah, yeah. This day, you are become the people of Yahweh, your Elohim. You shall therefore obey the voice of Yahweh. Did y'all hear the Israel? We ought to do what? Obey the voice of Yahweh. Now, he's still talking to us too now. You ought to obey the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Daniel 9, 11. Yea, and all of Israel have transgressed your law. We agree, right? Even by departing, 
that they might not obey your voice. Therefore, the curses is poured upon us and the oath is written in the Torah of Moses, the servant of Yah, because we have sinned. And he have confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges, the judges us, by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, the Torah, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before Yahweh Elohim that he might turn from our in lawlessness, a, a lawlessness. Well, y'all doing away with the word iniquity. No, we just know what it means. Lawlessness has, has it's not watered down. It doesn't lose strength when you say lawless because the, when you say lawlessness, it, it, it is designed to remind you of the law. Iniquity is not there to design to remind you of the law. Iniquity is to get you to focus on you and your sin. But see, when you, you lawlessness, it puts you back to the law and then you see where you missed the mark. That's, see, that's the reason why that we have to be extremely concrete in our application and delivery of this so we can understand the impact that is designed to happen upon our minds and our conscience so that we don't never let these things slip. Yahweh Elohim, that we might turn from our lawlessness and understand your truth. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the what? The Israelites, the saints of the Most High and to think to change Times, laws, and they shall be given into his hand unto a what? Time, that's one year. And times, that's two. And the dividing of time, six, so there you'll go to your three and a half right there. There's your three and a half that's written over in the book of Revelations. Daniel and Revelation parallels each other. That's how I know the, the great tribulation is going to be three and a half years. Look at them looking. Ooh, what, what y'all got to go throw away y'all left behind books? But the judgment, hey, do y'all ever notice that <clears throat> people never, ever take issue and answer our doctrine? They always shoot disparaging comments and slurs and indignities and insults. But they never attack our doctrine. Y'all stay focused on that. I told you, I'm going I'm to say, I'm going to try my best to get you to go to hell. I'm going to get you to lie on y'all. Go ahead and lie on y'all. Isn't it amazing with all these people that have all this knowledge of biblical marriage, yet nobody will answer? They'll go out there and make their own little independent videos because it, it gets, it's amazing how it still gets a lot of views though. No matter, even if they're lying, it gets a lot of views. But nobody ever wants to talk about this. See, the, you know the reason why? Because it's important to build in the kingdom. And people hate it. I actually love it myself. Hallelujah. Especially when you're married to good women. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But don't worry about it. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. And the kingdom, did I read that? Did I read this? But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion and consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom of the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints. You know the reason why it's given, right? Inheritance. He said, didn't he promise us an inheritance? He gonna make good on it. And the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and the dominions shall serve and obey. So come on, teach. Let's read Matitiah 24, 
Verse 29 through 44. I learned something about getting old too. You want to hear it? You better start moving when you're young so you can develop a body that, that will not act old when it gets old because if you don't use it, you will lose it. You're not going to stop time, but you sure can look like time. Like Brother Bud says, if you ain't handsome, you better be handy. A woman appreciate a handyman. And what if you get old, you can't do nothing. Everybody should be actually trying to stride. Man, well, Lillian is an inspiration. She just don't stop. She literally don't stop. She just keep on going. Never complains about washing the dishes unless you put them up there late. I just threw that in there. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Come on, teach. Read. Immediately after the tri tribulation of those Immediately days. what? After. Immediately. After. Immediately. After. Immediately. After. And this is the thing I used to say over and over again. Don't the book just say immediately? But you say before. Panism, I'm mid, I'm, I'm post-trib, I'm pre-trib. No, I just believe it's all going to pan out. No, you stupid as hell. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, read. Shall the sun be darkened. The sun is going to do what? Be darkened. Keep reading. And the moon shall not give her light. Come on. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This happened immediately after the tribulation. You don't think the whole world going to see that? Come on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Meaning all the nations of the earth is going to mourn. Come on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds they're of gonna, heaven. Wait, wait, wait. They're going to see him coming where? In, come, in they're going to see him coming where? Clouds. Everybody's going to see him. Can everybody, can everybody see the moon? Yeah, but it's at different times. You ain't going to miss this grand interest. I promise you that. The world is not going to miss this grand interest. No, you ain't. It won't be dark on one side, light on the other. Not when he come. He bringing the light with him. Mm -hmm. Read on. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power. With what? With power. And what else? Great glory. Keep reading. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh oh, now wait a minute. Remember, it's the angel's job to gather the elect. It's also the angel's job to gather all the tares into bundles. There's going to be a lot going on in a short period of time. He's going to send his angels to gather who? His elect. The, from, see, you know what that means, right? You've all been elected. Every single one of you have been elected. That's amazing. I mean, because, come on, sometime when you look to your left and right, you say, I wouldn't elect them. Good thing it ain't your choice. Huh? Oh, that's going to be nice, isn't it? To be the elect. Read on. And they shall gather their, together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. That means from the north, south, east, and west. Come on. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now let's hear the parable of the what? Fig tree. Read. 
when his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Don't you know summer is nigh? Huh? Can't y'all tell when them leaves coming up on the tree and stuff? You can tell that summer's coming. When you look at a fig tree, it'll tell you when summer's coming. You don't need no meteorologist. You don't need News Channel 5 or Fox News will tell you that. You can just look at the tree and it'll tell you when summer's coming. Come on. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass. See, now we think generation, you think generation 40 years or something like that. He's talking about that particular generation when all this stuff takes place. That's how I can tell you, Jesus ain't coming this year. He ain't coming next year. He ain't coming a year after that. And he ain't coming a year after that. No, you don't know. Yeah, I do. Because I'm an Israelite and I know his times and seasons. Now, I'm not sure the exact day or hour, but I know the season. And he's going to be coming during this time of the year. Woo. Remember, the whole world is ignorant of y'all, but not us. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hmm? He always reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Hallelujah. Read. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knows no man. You hear that? The day and the hour knows no man. Didn't I just got finished telling you? I can't tell you the day or hour. But I sure do know the times and the seasons. When they come. Well, when he coming? It ain't the time. It ain't the season yet. See how smart I am? Just stick with the book. But I can tell you one thing. When I see a leaf on a fig tree. I can discern the signs of the time. I can tell you the spring is coming. When I start seeing all these things that he spoke about that's going to come up on this earth, I can tell you that the desolation thereof is nigh. You don't need no prophet. You don't need no prophecy. All you got to do is read the, the greatest prophet that ever lived, which was Jesus, what he said. How much, how much a prophet you got to be to discern that it's springtime when you see leaves budding on a tree? If you know his word, you mean to tell me you can't look out and see what he has said and tell you that this time, we will know. Hallelujah. Come on. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Boy, they were getting down, wasn't they? They were getting down in those days, kind of like we do in America. Women marrying women, men marrying men, women marrying dogs, men wearing, marrying dogs. I told y'all, man, they doing, this, they doing this bestiality thing. They doing it. It's just on the low. There's some nasty folks, boy. Yeah, there's some foul spirit here. Come on. Marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So up until the time when the fig tree is bringing forth its leaves, the world's still going to continue to keep doing everything. They don't care what's happening in the universe. They don't care that armies are compassing about Jerusalem. They don't care. They're going to keep on doing it all the way up until the day he come in those clouds. Read. And knew not until the, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So you think about this. In Noah's day, he was saying, hey, it's going to rain. It's going to do what? It's going to rain. What the well is rain? What is rain? Uh, you know that stuff that come up out of the ground? Oh, yeah. It's going to come out of the sky. Oh, you're a crackpot, man. There's something wrong with you, man. What the hell are you talking about? How, the water come from the earth, man. It don't come out of the sky. Uh, water's going to fall from the sky. A lot of it, too. 
And you see that mountain over there? It's going to be above that mountain. Oh, Noah, you, you finish. You finish. I don't know. You, you ain't smoking crack, but you must got some of that sage. You're doing something. You mean to tell me that the stuff that comes, that's why we can't listen to you, man. Because you don't make no sense. It's the same way when the king comes. They're going to say, man, we can't listen to you. Look how good, don't y'all know that Satan has his thing planned for everybody in the world to be happy in their lawlessness? That's what the whole, the whole world's moving to. It don't matter what it means. It's just love. It's love. And all you people that, that are nothing but black spots on our liberty talking about, what do you mean I can't marry him and I can't marry her and we can't all put our rainbow push coalition together and be happy? Satan's going to have the whole world happy. But we're going to be mourning. He said he's going to come and comfort those that mourn. Never mind. Never mind. You need to know the state that you're going to be in. You can't even go outside the gates of this community and stuff and be happy when you see these heathens and all the mess that goes on. You be like, what in the hell? But they just walk around like it ain't nothing. They just, everybody's giddy. Everybody, they got this little fabrication, this manufactured happiness. They don't even, I'm telling you, man, I, 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 I don't, do, do I do good when we go around these airports? Do I do good hiding my face? You go down to Atlanta and you see a man wearing a beard and got on high heels and lipstick. Everybody else just pass along like it. I do like this. What the hell? Did y'all see that? Do I, am I not like that? And everybody else just going along. Ain't, ain't nothing happening. Ain't nobody upset or anything. I'm like, that is a damn abomination, man. Son, his car, you see that thing right there? That's Satan. That's the hell. <laughs> Don't y'all tell me all the time, boy, you sure ain't hiding it on your face, are you? I said, ain't I, ain't I, ain't I salt? I'm not going to make these people feel comfortable in their lawlessness. Now, I'm not bothering them. They ain't bothering me, but I still got freedom of speech. And I don't like the way you look. How about that? You wicked thing. Ooh, it's sick too. Them things make you lose your appetite and everything. Your, your face automatically just does, it does this. Ugh. And the whole world is going on like ain't nothing happening. You know, what is your truth? Ain't that how they talk? Everybody's still trying to be El Elohim. Read, teach. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So, so this world is not going to know. Until the king come, this world ain't going to know. Come on. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall, be, then shall two be in the field. Two going to be where? In the field. And what's going to happen? The one shall be taken. And what? The other left. Come on. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. They're going to be grinding at the mill and the one going to be what? The one shall be taken. And the what? And the other left. And the people said, see, this is proof of the rapture right here. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Lord, ain't you outside the book. So which one is the righteous? The one that's taken or the one that's left? The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. The taken is the one that's going to be destroyed. Hmm. 
Read. Watch, therefore. Wait, 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 wait. Do what? Watch. Do what? Watch. Now, it's a different watching now. That means you have your discernment at an extreme height. Always have a heightened sense of awareness. Situational awareness. You should be always watching. See, we're agriculture people. We're always supposed to be looking to discern the signs of the times. Read. For you know not what hour your master does come. But know this. Now remember, the only ones that know the hour that the master is coming is the father. Michael don't know. Gabriel don't know. Seraphim, cherubim, they don't know. Moshe, Elijah, nobody knows. Only the Father. The hour. So in other words, you better not get caught up in complacency. You better not get caught up in the cares of this life and getting wrapped up in it. I hope you're not in a bitter spirit that day. You better watch therefore. I hope you're not full of envy that day. You better watch therefore. I hope you're not harvesting hatred in your heart on that day. You better watch, therefore. You better watch, and you better watch. Read. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come. See that? In what what? Watch, watch. the thief, thief was coming, right? What watch the thief was coming? Come on. He would have watched. He would have what? He would have watched. Huh? When his people mostly break in and steal. At night. So if you're a good man, you know what a thief is coming, you would have what? Watched. Read on. And would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready. Be what? Also ready. Now, if you're ready, are you not trained? Ready don't mean you're getting ready. Um, if you're supposed to be somewhere at 7.30, you don't leave at 7.30 to get there. You know, kind of like when we take this, these nice little pictures that we take on the feast days. Picture, 10.30. Don't come in there damn 10.35. We're locking the door on you this year. <laughs> See what I mean? When, you, when it says 10.30, that means you arrive prior to 10.30. So when 10.30 gets there, you're there. Well, what about you? You come sashaying in. The commander is never late. His duties always require him to be elsewhere. So stop running around acting like you're the commander. <laughs> Look at him looking. That's funny. So here we are, this ecclesia. And we don't know what hour Yahshua is going to come. So we're going to sit and wait for that hour. Are you following me? For him to come. But then we don't want to come because we don't know the hour. So what we're going to do is not watch and not prepare since we don't know the hour. So that way, because if I knew the hour, I'm still going to be late. You have never known people to be fashionably late. In this fashion, you better not be late. You better be ready. You better be sober. You better be vigilant. I'm telling you, you better not let complacency slip in. You better not let the cares of this world, the cares of this life, Take you away from the season. Wouldn't that be something that you could live all these many years and then all of a sudden uh, you fall out a season before the king come? Kingdom said, hey, king says, man, hey, all that righteousness you ever did, I won't even remember. Y'all better know y'all. Y'all better know y'all. He said, if you put your hand to the plow, and you look back, you're not fit. A fit man is a righteous man. 
You're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Most people found out that actually being in this ministry, it's a true plow. Oh yeah, it's a plow. Glad to be in the vineyard or the, on the fields laboring with y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Read, teach. Therefore, be you also ready. Be also ready. For in such an hour. In such a what? Hour. Hour. As you think not, the Son of Man comes. So since you don't know the hour, it would behoove us to always be what? Ready. Not getting ready. Ready. Glory to the King. Ten maidens to meet one man, polygyny at its finest. Come on, teach. Biblical marriage at its finest. See, Jesus even talked about it. It's just that when you're in a monogamous culture, you, 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 could, be, you could be looking at a picture and still not see the picture. That's the way we've been trained here in America. We've been trained to be blind with our eyes wide open. You know you can have spiritual blindness? How many times you read over a scripture and you read over it hundreds of times and then one day it was preached and all of a sudden the scales fell from your eyes? Huh? That you can give Yahshua all the glory for. Because he said, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. So anytime that your understanding was not open, that means he's dealing with you. Y'all hear me, Israel? That means he is dealing with you. Anytime you lack understanding, didn't have it, and now all of a sudden your understanding is open, he's dealing with you. That's the Holy Spirit. Is dealing with you. <laughs> now you got the Holy Spirit that's dealing with you, but he said that his spirit would not always strive with man. His spirit is not dealing with nobody else, but he's dealing with you. You're constantly receiving revelation. You're constantly having his word revealed. You're constantly having your eyes open. Constantly. See, man, y'all don't take things light, man. Y'all take things light. Well, I just don't know if I'm going I'm to make it. What do you mean you don't know if you don't make it? You need to get out of that. You're already in the family. It's just that while you're in the family, you need to stop despising y'all's chasing it. You don't need to be weary when you're corrected. Yes, sir. A hallmark of a son and daughter knows that their father loves them is when he chases them. It sure is nice when you have daughters, you can rebuke them and chase them and they still say, thank you. I love you. <laughs> them sons, they got all that testosterone, they kind of slow up. <clears throat> <clears throat> say it, boy. <laughs> and don't sit up and call me, tell me you some kind of man. I'll let you know when you're a man. You ain't no man till the day you can whoop my ass. How about that? <laughs> Anybody ever had fathers talking? Oh, that's right. This generation, y'all ain't never had no man talking. No, y'all ain't, ain't never had no man talking. Dad, dog, he's talking like that all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I come up the right way. Mm-hmm. Lisa got me to Jesus. Hallelujah. Read, teach. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. How many virgins? Ten. Well, how many virgins? Ten. Let me see. All these bridesmaids, 
and one groom. Marriage, supper of the lamb. Won't be no pig on the menu either. <laughs> Read on. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Well, now what they all were doing? What were they all doing? Going to meet, meet the, the bridegroom. bridegroom. Ten pure people. What do you think it means when it says "ver"? You think it literally means it talk? Don't you ask yourself if if the virgins are going to be the one that's going to go to marriage supper lamb? How can I be a virgin? Are you not with Messiah? Are you not preparing yourself for the kingdom? Are you not keeping yourself for him and him alone? Are you not preserving yourself for him and him alone? You're not going to let no other God touch you. You're not going to let. Oh, never mind. Y'all keep up with this, man. I'm going to call it today. We already had enough preaching from last night. I'm going to call it today and I'm going to go home. Somebody said, what do you mean go home? You're already home. <laughs> Read. And five of them were wise. Wait a minute. So that means in Israel, there's going to be half of Israel that's not wise. Well, you think he's giving the analogy of ten virgins, five wise, five foot? They all were virgins. It's just that some of us are wise and some of us are foolish. Don't the Bible even say that the Messiah said that the children of the kingdom will be thrust into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth? That's the one who missed the king coming. He said the children of the kingdom. Eight souls in Noah's day. Only two righteous that was able to enter into the promised land that come from the old God. But their children was able to go in, but not them. That's a cut. That's a serious. Do the math. That's some. You better make sure you wise. You better make sure you wise. Read. And five were foolish. Five were wise and five were foolish. Come on. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They, they, they picked up their lamps though and they had no what? They had no work ethic. They didn't go labor to, to be able to provide for themselves some oil in a lamp. The foolish, y'all want to know some of the character traits of the foolish? And who wants to know some of the character traits of the foolish so you can make sure you're not foolish? Hmm? Don't the book says the oil of gladness. That means if you're happy, you, can, you got a little bit of oil in your lamp. Oh, man. Boy, y'all know how tempted I am to walk out that door right now. Y'all have no idea. Ask them, ask the old God have I ever been up there preaching and too much of this stuff went on. I just say, all right, bless y'all. I'm out. Have I not done it before? Everybody sitting there looking at me and I'm, I'm gone. I'm, y'all ain't never seen it before, but y'all working on it. And like, what? What are we supposed to do? If I have to give you that answer, it's crazy. Read on, teach. But the wise... But the wise took oil in their vessel. But see, they had oil in the vessel already. The foolish was coming empty. They assumed because I'm a virgin, you a virgin, we all virgins, we all going.
By the way, in the oil of joy, is just not joy. It's always having joy in him. I mean, rejoicing y'all will always, and again, I say rejoice. Give me all in my lamb. Keep me burning. Give me all in my lamb. I'll pray. I'll pray. Give me all in my lamb. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the break of day I need all in my lamb keep me burning I need all in my lamb I'll pray I'll pray I need all in my lamb to keep it burning, watch this, to keep it burning to the break, the king coming of day. And when I got that oil in my lap, and I will sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the king of kings. And I will sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the king of kings. Well, what is Hosanna? Blessed is he who cometh in the name of Yahshua. Yahweh yeah. Almighty. Woo, boy. Mm. Do y'all see how relevant and prevalent all this is? It just fits together like a puzzle. Every bit of it does. You better make sure you have that oil of joy. Mm. Can you imagine how it will be when he comes? How joyful you're going to be in this house of prayer when you come and you present yourself and your lamp is burning bright because you got oil in it. Huh? What are we going to use the oil for, Pastor? Well, one thing, oil is there to make your face shine. Woo-wee! Woo-wee! Uh-huh! Ooh, it's more than just for burning now. It's there to make you look good when he comes. Mm. Stop. Stop. <laughs> it just fits together, don't it? Man. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, boy. Imagine how you're going to be walking when you present yourself to your king. You going if you didn't have no oil, man, you're gonna be a virgin. You're gonna be like, uh, but when, we, when somebody got a full bottle, you're gonna be like, ah, 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 ah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Man, y'all better get this. Better let these sands sink down. Huh? But that's what the Hey, you got to labor to get this oil. You got to work out your salvation. Huh? Y'all remember the parable of the talents, right? Okay. Come on, teach, read. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. With their lamps. Come on. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes. That's when you take that vessel, you put that oil in that lamp, and it lights your way to see. (laughs) 
His word is what? His word is what? And, 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 and it lights my what? And mind you, the virgins, they're going to want some oil out of your vessel that you're going to put in your lamp. They want, they're going to want some. You're going to say, man, if I give you some, uh-uh. I got to have enough. <laughs> I can't, man I, man, I love you, man, but I can't, uh-uh. I can't, man, I can't risk this at all. No, no, no. But I got some information for you. I got some information for you. You see, if you learn how to labor so you can get paid, then you can go buy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Read. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. What's the purpose of trimming the lamps? To make sure that the wick can burn bright. You don't want no wick that's got creaso all on the top of it and it's hard to fire up your lamp. Uh-oh. Well, if you ain't never lit it in the first place, I guess you ain't got nothing to worry about because you ain't got no oil to keep it burning in, do you? Let me talk to y'all about oil lamps because some of y'all don't even know. Y'all used to cutting on light. Y'all don't know about oil lamps. See, you can have oil in the vessel to put in the lamp, but that wick will not light as soon as you put that oil in that vessel it takes time for the oil to travel up the wick it takes time for that wick to get saturated with that oil but once it reaches to the top and then you trim off the wick a little bit you can go ahead and light one time it'll catch So by the time the ones that didn't have no oil, by the time they went to go buy, all right, follow me? Your oil is already going to be ran up to the top. You're going to be sitting there with your light burning bright. Now, do you really think when he's talking about oil lamps and all that, he's really talking about that? No, he said, you let your light so shine. Before men that they may see your what? Good works. I told you, you better work out your salvation. But do it with fear and trembling. You better work it out. Read on. And the foolish said unto the wise. What do we do? Give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. You hear that? Come on. But go you rather and do to, what? To them that sell and buy for yourself. Yeah, buy the truth and sell it not. When you want you buy that truth, you better keep it close. You better keep it in your vessel. Make me a vessel. Pure and holy. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Hmm? See how important it is to keep yourself ready and clean? Come on. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. He, he did what? He came. He get, so what are you supposed to have been doing all this time? Watching. You're supposed to have been watching. You're supposed to have been ready. You're supposed to have oil in your vessels. Uh-oh. Come on. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. 
And the door was shut. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, didn't he say something about as it was in the days of Noah? Now, now remember, Noah, he built the door, but he didn't open the door, and he didn't shut the door. The book says when once the master rises up and shuts to the door, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. See, right now the door is open. The spirit and the bride says, come. Huh? And most people are going to miss it. Uh-oh. Because they're consumed in his life with foolishness, or either depression and anxiety and fear and hatred. And you could be consumed with the stuff of this world, or you could be consumed with all the things that are detriment to your soul. Anything that will keep you from buying. Come on. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Master, Master, open to us. Oh, we're knocking on the door. Now, what? They're still what? Virgins. They're the ones that were playing assembly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're the ones that was playing assembly. They're the ones that played like they had the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that pretended to be Israelites. Now, Yahshua, hey, he gave them the same salvation, but he told you something to do, and you didn't do it. Uh-oh. You're supposed to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And some of you ain't doing nothing. What do you mean work out? You don't think we got work to do? Is deliverance work? Work out your salvation with fear and tremble. Is prayer work, labor of love, a petition? Work out your salvation with fear and tremble. Is fasting work to break the bond of iniquity? Work out your salvation with fear and tremble. Uh-oh. Is study work? Study to show yourself approved. Work out your salvation with fear and tremble. Oh, but I ain't got time for all that. I ain't got time for all that. And you ain't got no time for oil either. You ain't got no time for all then either. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh and uh uh-oh again. Come on. But he answered and said. What did he say? Verily I say unto you. The king says, verily I say unto you. Truly I say unto you. I know you not. I don't even know you. I don't even have a relationship with you. When did you spend your time talking to me in the morning? Hmm? I mean, I told you in my word, if you don't have my spirit, then you're none of mine. Uh Uh-oh. Didn't I tell you I came to preach deliverance? And you still topped off with devils. Uh Uh-oh. I don't know you. But the ones that are in here, when they call my name, I answer them. Mm, mm, mm. He says, the ones that are outside knocking on the door, I don't know you. Mm. You ain't never been intimate with me. Mm, mm, mm. You may have thought you was preserving yourself, but it wasn't for me. Uh oh. Come and talk to me. I really want to meet you, girl. You don't, you don't even get no talk. I really want to know your name. Hey! <laughs> Y'all want you to talk to him. He got to know who you are. How in the world can you get married to someone if you ain't got no, no conversation? I mean, what, what, we supposed to talk the day of the, of the marriage? No, we communicating before then. Oh, no. Who 
gets married to someone you ain't never had a conversation with? See, he needs us to talk to him so we can know his expectations. So we can know how to please him. See, the whole entire scripture is our book of behavior. It's a contractual agreement. He promised to, to give us the kingdom. That means he's providing. He promised us protection from the enemy of our soul. But since we've been heathens out here, we got to read the instruction manual, so we need to know how to submit to him to know his will. Oh, is that the reason why we got all this rebellion going on? Because somebody, you don't want to read the manual to know his will? That's the reason why we got all this rebellion. Wow. You see, because it's written in this manual, the joy of Yah is my strength. That's written. You mean to tell me I got to be excited about the one I'm getting married to? Yes. 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 What else do you like? Well, I'd like for you to sing to me. Sing to you. Yes. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh forever. I will sing. Oh, I will sing. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh forever. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh. And with my mind, well, I rejoice. Thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness, and with my mouth will I make noise. Thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh forever. I will sing. Oh, I will sing. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh forever. I will sing of the mercy of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, Pastor, how you know all these songs? Because I've been spending time with him. I've been spending time with him. Mm -hmm. He likes being lifted up. You know, he's, he, he's, he's one of these jealous L's. He, he loves submission. Uh-oh. I'm going to say something wrong, huh? Come on, teach, read. Hope everybody getting this. Mm -hmm. Watch, therefore. Watch, therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Ooh, I think we got a lot of learning on watch, though, didn't we? We got a lot of good learning today on watching it, didn't we? Mm -mm -mm. And Yahweh will scatter you among the nations. He shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahweh will lead you. So who led us over here? God did. He scattered us. And there you shall serve other Elohims. Did we not do that? Come on, whoever celebrated Christmas, raise your hand. You served other Elohims. Whoever showed up for Easter, come on, man. Whoever went to a church on Sunday and mm, mm, whoever bowed down before a Christmas tree. Well, I didn't really bow down. Did you get the present? Don't play with me. Don't play with me. You the same people that there will be a damn image of the damn beast up here and he'll claim, he'll command you to bow down and you'll say you was tying your shoe. See what I mean? And you shall serve God. So work me with man's hand, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Huh? How many times you looked at, 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 at Cesare Bozier and said, that Jesus? That faggot ain't no Jesus. Mm 
you look into Jesus and then you let your little tender heart go out. Looking at a queer, a queer on a wall. Could you imagine the Catholics, boy? They, they will be fainting. <laughs> they will be fainting right now, wouldn't they? Some of y'all ex-Catholics, Holy Mary, Mother of Yah, pray for us. Oh man, I you better not make a damn petition for me at all, Mary. See what I'm talking about? Which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But you're from thence. From all these places where y'all have scattered you and you have served all the mighty ones and Elohims. Huh? The, the, it says, <clears throat> but if you will seek Yah, your Elohim, you will find him. And if you seek him with, with not a little bit of your heart, not a piece of your heart, <laughs> oh, but with all thine heart and all your soul. What did he say? He says, when you're in tribulation, you know when times are rough, <laughs> Hallelujah, you need in great tribulation when you're being persecuted. All these things will come up on you in the latter days. But if you would turn to Yahweh your Elohim and shall be obedient unto his voice, Yahweh is merciful. Somebody say, Yah's merciful. Yah's very, he would not forsake you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. I will never destroy you. I will not forget the fathers, the covenant that I made with your fathers, which I swear unto them. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> That's a good promise. He said he wasn't going to destroy us if we just seek his face no matter where we at. Man, I'll take that promise. Huh? Man, I, I'm, I'm with that. But in order to get there, you got to repent. In Ezekiel 12, 15. And they shall know that I am Yahweh, when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. You see, these are the feast days. And of course, you know, somebody, this is a nice little thing I got off of Google, but man, they be messing stuff up, though. You know what I mean? So look what they're doing. Right here, on the fifth appointment, trumpet, they got rid of the New Year's Day. Is this the New Year's Day? The, the New Year's Day start way over here. You see what I mean? And what did Daniel say they're going to seek to do? Hey, boy, y'all some good, y'all been good students. Daniel said they're going to seek to change times and seasons. Man, this is a mess, isn't it? But the trumpets is the regathering of Israel, which we had just read. Hallelujah. All right, a little history lesson real quick, and we're going to be done, all right? Now, Baal worship is fully entrenched after we done went through all these captivities. Now, these are Gentiles. Luke 21, 24 said, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captain of all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles uh, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then again, like I said earlier, there's your scripture for them saying they ain't never been in bondage. Now, there's no way that these people are the people of this book. It's just simply, there is no way, no way. We've been in Egyptian captivity, they ain't been in none. We've been in Assyrian captivity, they ain't been in none. We've been in the Babylonian captivity, they ain't been in none. We've been in the Medes and Persian captivity, they have not been in none. The Jews ain't been in none of these. We've been in the Greco-Roman captivity and they ain't been in none. We've been in the Arab captivity, they have not been in none. The Jews have not been in none. We've been in the European captivity, they have not been in none. We've been in the American captivity. They ain't been in none. And after this captivity, the Lamb of the tribe of Judah is coming back for his people. Yeah. 
Now, in 2 Kings 18 11, the king of Assyria did carry away Israel into Assyria and put them in Hala and Harbor and by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Now, this was from 745 to 721 BC. Israel was taken into the Assyrian slavery. We get that, right? I'm going to run through this real quick, okay? Now, the Assyrians moved settlers from Samaria and other areas in the vacant cities. They moved settlers into Samaria. Samaria. And the king of Assyria bought men from Babylon and from Kuf uh, and from Ava and from Hamath and from the Sepharim. Who say that they, ain't this another plant of the, the Jews? Sephardic, Sephardim. Oh, I'm Sephardim. I'm Israel. And place them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. I told y'all, believe what people tell you that they are. They ain't Israelites. If they say they're Sephardic, Sephardim, they didn't believe them. They say they ask and ask, believe them. All these people tell you who they are and they never say they, they, they say they live in the land of Israel, but they don't ever say that they're Israelites. Uh-oh. Because it didn't say all Hebrews are going to be saved. It didn't say all Hebrews are going to be saved. You know the reason why? Because Hebrews are a plethora of people. He told Abraham that I'm going to make you great and be the father of many nations. There's a lot of Hebrew nations. They just ain't Israelites. Hallelujah. Instead of the children of Israel, they possessed Samaria and dwelled in the cities thereof. And it was so at the beginning of their dwelling that they feared not Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh sent lions among them, which, showed, which slew some of them, killed some of them. You know why? Because you got a bunch of transplanted pagan people defiling the land with their wickedness. And the land was protected then, so Yahweh said, well, who is this? Man, lions go eat their ass. Wherefore they spake to the king of Syria, saying, The nations which you have removed and placed in the city of Samaria know not the manner of the Elohim of the land. Everybody said, Well, why come in y'all guarding it right now? Because y'all told you, Jesus said, This day your house is left unto you desolate. You can have it. Y'all ain't protecting that piece of land as long as them Gentile shits over there. Uh oh. He's interested in Jerusalem above is coming down to this earth. I mean, how many temples we done built there as a people over the history, over the years, and defiled every single one of them? Therefore, he sent lions among them, and behold, they slayed, slew them, slayed them, killed them, because they know not the manner of Elohim of the land. And the king of Syria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom they bought from this. And let them go and dwell there and let them teach them the manner of the Elohim of the land. And they feared Yahweh and served their what? See, this coexistence stuff. Trying to intermingle and mix. That's what Christianity is doing. Trying to make you think it's okay for you to serve all these other pagan gods and say that you're a child of the king at the same time. No. Commandment says he's a jealous hell. Now, the people were so wicked, they did not even fear their own Elohims. And it says, unto this day they do after the former manners, and they fear not Yahweh, neither do they after their statutes and after their ordinances, or after the law or the commandment which Yahweh commanded the children of Jacob, whom they named Israel. So these nations feared Yahweh. You know, I need to start correcting all this stuff the way King James talk. Because they would tell you that they actually, come on, how do you fear y'all when you can't serve two masters? You understand what I mean? That's that, again, that's that pensmanship stuff. And serve their graven images, both their children and their children's children. As did their father, so do they unto this day. Now in Jeremiah, uh, 600 B.C., 
23, 13, I have seen the folly of the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in who? Baal. What do you think American Christians are doing today? Prophesying in Baal. All this is bell worship. It's all Babylonian worship. Every bit of it is. Christmas, Easter, Sunday, all that is Babylonian bell worship. And calls my people Israel to earth. That damn thing right there called a Babylonian Talmud. That's what the majority of the so-called scribes and modern day scribes and Pharisees live by today. They live more by this and use the Torah as a side book. In this place right here, there's a lot of vile stuff written in there. Wicked stuff. So approximately 714 BC, seven years after the house of Israel went into the Assyrian captivity, meaning slavery, 2,150 of the house of Judah went into the Assyrian captivity. How many went? 200,150. And then look, of the remnant of Judah went into Babylon in captivity. How many? 14,600. Now, facts. Many people embrace the Jewish religion, but this does not make them a Hebrew or an Israelite. The word Jews, the words Jews and Israelites are not to be used interchangeably. Listen very closely. People would tell you what they are. 1,460, taken into what? Babylonian captivity, right? 200 and 200,150 and, and the house of Judah went into the Assyrian captivity. Remember? It's kind of like a recap, right? Y'all should know this. All right? 100 years after the Assyrians, Judah was taken into captivity, into slavery, to Babylon, 2 Kings 24, 14. And he carried away Jerusalem and all the princes and the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remained save the what? Poorest sort of the people of the land. Wouldn't it be something you'd be taking to captivity and then all the people who know how to do shit, they left behind? All the people, I mean, all the people who know how to do stuff, the nations took it because they're going to be a benefit, but they're going to leave all y'all poor folks back here that don't know shit how to fend for each other? Well, what a mess that going to be. You got a bunch of people that ain't got no skills. They can't hunt, but they take all the hunters. You take, they take all the builders, and then <laughs> your city has been sacked and destroyed. Who going to build a house? Uh-oh. In other words, even the nations know skilled labor when they see it. The Assyrians moved settlers into Samaria and from the er other areas to live in the vacant cities. And, and the king of Assyria bought men from Babylon and Kuth and from Avon, Haman, and from Sepharvim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelled in the cities thereof. Not all of Jerusalem was taken to Babylon. Some were left in the land. Jeremiah speaks about this. He says, And Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard left certain of the poor of the land for what? Vine dressers and husband men. So we had imposters in our land posing as the people for a very long time. Very long time. So Israel, I went through all that real quick as an ending or try to stimulate your mind there for a second to let us know that the real Israel is scattered in a diaspora. Now, there are a few that have still been left back there. But he took all the intelligent people and scattered them into these nations. And then from there, we went throughout this whole earth. So as we get ready for the Feast of Trump, it's coming up next week, right? Get ready to Feast of Trump and get your shofar ready. Get ready to sound the trumpet and blow the alarm and know that we're rehearsing for the king to come. Blow a trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm. Hallelujah. A beautiful time of the year. Y'all is bringing us to another feast day to be able to, watch this, worship him. So we're going up to the mountain of Yah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, where is that at? High and lifted up in your heart. Hallelujah. Let us stand, Israel. Glory to the King. Hope y'all learned something today. Glory to the King. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Yah, my Redeemer, my King.
y'all dismiss and blessed in the magnificent name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Shabbat Shalom, Israel. King is coming. Glory to the King. Uh-oh, look at him looking.